Okay, in decade. Long term, all right. Good deal. Well, I thought long term, but just beginning options. Is, okay, great, great. That's a good, I mean, I really feel that long term, uh, that's, that's where it is to, for, for to really, really capitalize and on the, I guess the length or the something that's lasting, the long term prospectus is, uh, or perspective actually is the best way. But early on, I mean, you know, everybody, that, honestly, the, the, I guess it could be the sexy, the sexy phrase. I mean, the, the shiny object, it's options, but <clears throat> that if you don't, if you're not prepared as a quick way to lose money, but it's also one of the best ways to generate um, income short term with that, you know, so if, 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 if there's a balance, if, if there's a balance that can be put in place, it can come in the options field. Um, I'm gonna pull up, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen and pull up. <clears throat> a couple of websites that I go to just for research in the mornings. And let me know if you guys are familiar with these. Okay, the first one um, is Benzinga, B E N Z I N G A. And I'll type it in the uh, actually in chat bar for you. And Seeking Alpha. And are you guys familiar with those? Good, good. And I, I don't do the paid services on that one. Uh, now I do pay for um, one of my favorites right here is Investors Business Daily, IBD, but the website is uh, investors.com. This is, um, and my partner, you know, uh, Maurice, he, he's really a proponent of IBD. I, I like the newspaper. I used to really, really search for that when I was traveling and I, I, I was a subscriber, but then I got, my wife got me the digital uh, version for, I think for Christmas. And so it, it, it's kind of a marriage of, of both worlds where it, it, you have your long-term uh, investors and how you, and they kind of walk you through how their process and, and some really good ideas. And then you have traders in here as well that or actually they cater to traders as well. So, I mean, you have the news headlines and things like that, like the rise of TikTok, things that can generate ideas, you know, key headlines because the idea of, uh, and guys, this is just extra right now. So, uh, this isn't the, the topic that we're topics that we're going to stay on, but <clears throat> I thought since you guys were in here, we can just get rolling. And, uh, but, it, um, I just really think that you have to learn to separate, uh, signal from noise. Like there's, there's times when we get white noise and, uh, Let's see, have you heard of anything about chart mill? I'll pull it up one second. Uh, let's see, chart mill. White noise or, or just stuff that happens on the periphery of, of, of the industry or of the market. But sometimes we, we have to know what, what's gonna, who has the, uh, I guess the, the catalytic white noise because I watch Twitter and I watch Twitter for President Trump at times. I need to know what's going on, man, because his tweets move the market, and we know that. You know, it, it, you find out like if he if he says this week that, uh, oh yeah, President Xi and I are really on good terms, and uh, blah blah blah, the market could spike uh, and go, you know, in either direction. Now, one thing with traders is you guys can write this down. This is a uh, something that it just takes a lot of chartmill.com just make sure I'm at that let me retype it in welcome whoever just stepped in uh we're we're going over <clears throat> just just a little pre precursor to what's going to happen tonight but uh 
talking about process and long-term uh, investing, uh, trading as well. But yeah, I was talking about white noise and, and you're searching for signal and signal is something that, that can make a lasting move on the market or ha it has the effect of like, uh, I guess an inflection point or causes an inflection point or causes a pivot point that off of that noise, off of that, uh, the information. Hey, Crystal, how's it, how's it going? How's it going? Um, thanks for coming in, everybody. Um, so I watched, I wasn't a big Twitter fan, but my son was always getting, tw you know, Twitter updates or, hey, daddy, I saw this on Twitter. I saw that on Twitter. And I was like, oh, man, that's not news. That's not news. How's it going, Juliet? And uh, that's and he was like, that's not news. That's, you know, I, I, I would say that. But it come to find out that a lot of times it is news because on Twitter, that Twitter feed, you get the right ones in there. You're getting, you're almost getting the raw data. You're getting that data before it hits, you know, before it really, really, uh, <clears throat> really, really hits uh, the mainstream media. And that can, and it can become signal. So that, that's a key. I'm pulling up something real quick about when I'm talking about data. I have an uh, email list that I, that I send out. Uh, I try to do it once a week, you know, but if I see something that catches my attention, um, I'll email or I'll, I'll, I'll put it in like email form. I'll, you know, like this past, uh, there was one I did on big data. Let's see, did the Marriott report. But right here, big data. Uh, you notice that they're trying to track every, all of our movements to, uh, to see um, what's going on from the standpoint of are we uh, what the post corona activity is going to they're going to track the spending activity, track the uh, movements of, you know, just to make sure for testing and things like that. So uh, everyone collects our data. And the big this report that I put out, it was just talking about that. Um, if you can see it on the screen, can you type yes if you can see that on the screen right here, the big data? And I'll put the link to this in the, in the uh, chat. But just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen that says big data on there, if you don't mind, in the chat bar. Okay. Let's see. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, let me put the link to this in there. But I, the goal is I just, I'll give you some ideas that are on my mind. And the, the next step is for you to continue with the research and you just, uh, there's no set amount that I send out the emails during the week. But like, I mean, yeah, I woke up one morning and I noticed that Every time I looked up, the word data was coming up with the uh, guys on CNBC and across the screen on uh, Bloomberg. And I was like, I'm currently watching CNBC and I've heard the word data all morning, blah, blah, blah. But you, without us getting too emotional, when, when we get a uh, news clipping or a heading, we have to see, uh, is it signal? Is it going to move the market? Okay, if it does, how do we capitalize or how do we position ourselves in, in this market to... Uh, figure out okay what's the next move and these are some of the picks that i i wanted you know had everyone studying and the three that i, I was picking and selected were my, uh, this is mongo db that's splunk and that's new relic we got broham here what's going on mo let's see if i can make mo there you are Okay, you're in there, and you can you can record too, bro. All righty. <clears throat> I was just doing a little early work, man. We have a a, a nice group in here, nice uh, intimate crowd. I'm trying to let me get back to the main screen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We have eight in here, and we'll, you we'll get started in about. Uh, Four or five minutes, uh, Mo. I was I was giving I was telling everyone. I just asked, you know, if we had traders and long term investors and things like that. I asked them to uh, utilize the uh, chat bar or chat box to kind of let us know what 
what their uh, their goals were, their or, or their strategies, or current, uh, I guess, uh, what, what their current tool set is, so to speak. And uh, we have a, a pretty good mix. So you want you want to talk just a little preliminary, just any anything on your mind before we dive into the weekly outlook and then kind of start the episode. Mm-hmm. If not, man, you know, I, First I, of all, I like your uh, password, man. Every time I get ready to put the password dog, in, man. 777 <laughs> I was like, you know what? Man. Let me just put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, What do I have on my mind? Um, It's a good I, time to be in the markets. Okay. Good Look. time to be learning. Um, yeah. you know, how to, how to trade, how to invest, how to, um, do anything in the stock markets or the Forex markets or the crypto markets or the bond markets or commodities, whatever you trade in or invest in, it's a great time to learn how to do it. Use that chat bar. Uh, everybody, if, if something's on your mind, drop it in there. And then if Mo's talking, I'll check it. If I'm talking, he'll check it. And then, uh, we'll go from there. But there was an echo when I tried to open the mics. So would you, we'll test that maybe a little later, but, um, Mo, Hey man, I asked him, I, I mentioned the difference between signal and white noise that we get. Cause it's a 24 hour news cycle. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a technical trader, but I'm a hybrid. I'm a technical trader, and I'm also, I, I look for a news catalyst because news is beginning, it's moving the market, in my opinion, you know, in certain, in certain respects. Any thoughts on that, man? Um, news definitely, definitely moves the markets. Uh, I'm just, uh, how can I say, I, I mean, I know that, uh, their job is to sell their papers or their magazines or the advertisements on their sites or whatever. Um, they sell attention. So, you know, no matter what the news is, <clears throat> I, I, I take it, but I still, you know, uh, I don't know, believe it till I see it. Maybe not one of those things, but, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. Like even um, if I'm reading, you know, a company's um, financial reports, you know, they have an incentive to make their stuff look good, even when it's looking bad, or make the bad not look so bad. So, you know, um, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a <laughs> contrarian like that. Well, I, <coughs> well but, what I'm saying is like the, <laughs> sifting how we sift, because you got the, you have white noise and then you have signal, like every so often. And I know you from your background because you're methodical with your dates and in your calendar, like on investing.com. Uh, I'm not sure if they can see my, if you can see my screen, I have it pulled up. Uh, is it popping up on there? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Just, just the, the, uh, the, the calendar man for, for, uh, okay. Hey, the fed feds making a decision Thursday. Uh, mm-hmm. Powell's going to speak, uh, or the jobs report or, or the non-farm payroll. Mm-hmm. Those are all that that's Market signal. Events. That, right. That's signal for me, you right. know, but if I just see something on seeking alpha and I scroll down and I see trending articles and I see this one right here, airlines will ride sooner than expected. If I look at that on the surface and I try to jump price and just say, let's buy that. Let's buy the airlines, man. Let's go long just off of that headline i think that it's something that falls into that possibility of that's white noise that that's heavily opinionated uh and, and we got to sift through it and avoid the emotions. They use will <laughs> certainty Say it again. i said they use the word will as certainty exactly i'm already against it if, if you nothing can, certain <laughs> yeah man only thing certain is i know that i i did some tonight in the house that i forgot <laughs> to uh, doing the kitchen properly and my wife's gonna let me know in a sweet way <laughs> i'm certain of that you know we we can go to the market with that one but anyway man uh let, let's let's jump it off mo uh this this is it's eight o'clock we have 15 in here uh 
16. Guys, I'm JD, the mobile trader. Uh, and my brother right there is Maurice Jackson. and Trader Mo. Uh, trader Mo. And we're going to talk to you guys tonight. The last session was Friday. We try to go weekly, but we want to do a double session because uh, Friday we went mostly with a, a teaching aspect of uh, from the beginning of you're interested in the stock market. How do you buy your first share from broker selection to funding the account, selecting a stock and moving forward to building up a trading plan and things like that. But now we're going to kind of do a weekly outlook tonight and, uh, and just kind of move forward. Cause the idea is I'm a long-term trader. I mean, I'm a trader, man. I'm just, I'm a trader, but I'm a long-term investor uh, naturally, but I evolved into an options trader and I've done that for since probably old, right at the beginning of the, of the financial crisis is when I cut my teeth and uh, Mo, you want to let them know your, your breakdown and, and your style and, uh, yeah, so I'm Mo. Um, I have been, uh, well, I started, I guess, long term investing. I uh, started in college and then got into trading uh, after starting a business and um, just been trading for uh, professionally well, three, three years now. Um, professionally, probably seven or eight. Uh, but um, I trade mainly options. Uh, in crypto, and uh, well, I trade stocks, but I use options. That's how I say it. Um, Great point, man. That um, yes, because thank of you. The built-in leverage options have. So I trade stocks, but I use options to trade. Um, I I don't really put myself in like a trader or investor basket because I think you know it's all the same thing. It just depends on your time horizon. Um, I don't have anything right now that. Uh, you know, outside of, you know, 401k or like, you know, that, like, I don't have anything that I hold for a really long time. I just, I like the trades. Well, I tell you what, um, I'm in the same boat with that. And I, and I believe everyone in here is interested in long-term investing, but also what's going on, Erica? Oh, she said she had to, she said, you know, the last dance, last episode of the last dance is on tonight. <laughs> it's been a, I don't, we, we know Jordan, Jordan but he crossed up Byron Russell in the paint, backed it out. Oh, but then he came back again. Okay. But uh, hey, Selena. Hey, everybody. We're starting now. We're rolling. We're going to do the weekly outlook. So we have Crystal Slater in here as well. Nikita Tippins, uh, DC, DK, Miss Williams. Uh, I think Eric, I think I saw Eric in there. So we're up to 23. Russell Sanders, Keisha. Uh, that's Lakeisha, Selena, Hardaway, Penny Hardaway, Shirley Jones, uh, Kay Cannon, Kale, Kylan Chavis, uh, HBCU, LaShundra, Dennis Sinet, Deidre, CEO, Mobile Trader, Trader Mo, uh, Juliet, Jalen Taylor, and a GSXR 750. Sounds like that. That's a legit biotech. Uh, company man that we need to watch out for you so uh Emma, go ahead and jump into the weekly outlook man if you if you want if you want to take the baton what, uh, what you're looking at okay now. i definitely can do that um you want the screen things uh yeah can i share my screen let's see uh this will stop yes all right so one of the things that you know i use to trade i uh, I create a monthly report and I trade, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week, based off that report. It's quite extensive and, um, you know, yeah, dog. Yes, it is. So, um, you know, I, I I have a pretty good idea of what, um, based on history um, in the stock market, what to kind of expect this week. And um, I am expecting some weakness this week um, in. Last call was looking at crypto. Um, I'm expecting some weakness this week. Um, no, actually, mark out a little. Uh, except, well, in the S and P and the Dow, but I'm expecting more strength in the Nasdaq. I know that sounds weird, but uh, Nasdaq has been has been sturdy, man. Right, Nasdaq has been um, busting. 
um, it's it's been on a, I mean, just on the run. And I mean, if you think about the underlying, like you know, because I I guess you know I'm techno fundamentalist. Um, I use the technicals, but I'm I, I'm heavy in fundamentals. And if you think about just the underlying, um, every even with the economy shutting down, everything we've been doing or been using has been technology based. So um, it's right that uh, the technology index, you know, should be outperforming the, uh, you know, any other main index. So um, I do like what I see in these uh, last few daily candles in the NASDAQ. Uh, these candles, uh, hammer candles coming off of the uh, this 20 day moving average um, is still uh, close higher than the open price. Um, and all of these on above average volume. This and strong continuation, volume. man. Gee. And strong continuation, exactly. And this holding to the seven. Um, this uh, chart setup is uh, the alligator we use in DCG. Um, and it really, you know, kind of gives us a, a good idea of you know, bullish or bearish trend. And right now, um, especially for the NASDAQ, the trend is uh, bullish. Um, what I also can say as far as for expectate, well, the S&P 500. S&P 500. Um, and the ticker he's using is the SPX, guys. Yeah, this is the SPX index, S&P 500 wow. index. You can see even from um, looking at the two different charts, the NASDAQ has almost completely um, regained, you know, uh, most of its loss from, you know, this downturn. The, the Rona waterfall over there. Yeah. <laughs> The S and P five hundred is still struggling, so um, and you know my alligator is still not showing any uh, any bullishness, not nearly as it's showing for this Nasdaq right here. So, um, you know I'm I'm definitely expecting that. Um, what else? Was I was gonna say. Oh yeah, um, this week, um, two things. Well, I know also we have um, the uh, Fed minutes being released on Wednesday. That usually is a market movement event um, that usually um, does something, you know, with the markets. Uh, Wednesday is actually uh, an interesting day for uh, our DCG traders. So um, we have that day marked. But investing.com is the website. <clears throat> investing.com is what I'm on right now. And this is a lot of what I can use for. Uh, Getting, I'm looking for. I saw the economic calendar, I thought. That's what I was looking for. To the, uh, let's so, see. And, and guys. The, the economic calendar and the earnings, earnings calendar. Um, I usually, well, I have this app on my phone, so it's kind of, you know, I look at it on my phone. Right, it's right. A little easier to do it like that. But um, every day, what I like about this site is every day, um, even on my phone, it'll give like a little indication on how important the news will be to the market. Uh, in Japan, they GDP, um, that's what they're doing or have done. Yeah, they reported already. So if we go like to tomorrow, it's not it's not much being reported tomorrow. Nothing much important for the U.S. But you can see, um, you know, what time something is being reported and what time uh, and what the actual report is and how important it may be to the market. If it's like three bulls, that means it's like, it, it could be really a market moving event. So um, this is something that I keep an eye on daily um, and weekly. Um, and I know that the Fed minutes come out and the Fed minutes are the, is the, uh, basically the meeting minutes from their Fed meeting last time when they, uh, did they reduce rates or did they keep rates the same? I think they, they, they kept it flat. I think it was uh, because if anything, the, the, it's zero, uh, 0 0.25. So I got it. Yeah, it's time to renegotiate so, a few um, things. So it's time to, well, it's time for me to start getting the data together for next month. But anyway, um, I go, mm -hmm. I, I go through here and I, you can also uh, see the earnings calendar and that's what else i wanted to bring up this this week is going to be an interesting week for earnings very nice because um retail uh big large retailers are gonna uh 
asking them for earnings now i don't usually like uh i mean you can do earnings here another good place to go is um earnings whisper earnings and I, whisper, I look at them on twitter so much better man yeah yeah like they, i like a lot of these sites I, I do i use on my phone as well a lot um earnings whisper you can get an idea of the uh the ones that are going to come with volatility, oh, man. They they pay attention to volatility at Earnings Whisper. Right. Um, they're not giving me the. That, that it pulls up on Twitter out. a little bit better. Uh, yeah, just, they have like a, a, a open chart with all the. I don't know. I, for everybody I'll, in here, I'll try to. Yeah, we'll try to find it and actually put it in. I, I'll see if I can locate it. But we'll anyway, it. I'll pull it in. Um, and I'll find it. The point is. Um, you know, major companies are going to report earnings this week. And this is going to be one of the last big key weeks. I know Walmart is reporting this week. Target is reporting this week. Um, and, in well, it's a tech company. NVIDIA is reporting this week. But um, there are quite a few. There are a few others. I, I'm just I'm, I'm getting a uh, uh, wash brain right now. But, um few others that have uh, earnings this week and with uh, the retail numbers that came out last week, um, the national retail numbers being so, was, yeah, it was last week, uh, being so bad, you know, I'm interested to see if, you know, especially Walmart and Target, if they are as bad as those numbers, you know, have said, or if they are one of the ones that buck the trend and um, are able to have some some uh, positive price. Let's see. Uh, you know, man, uh, right now, okay, it might sound boring, not boring, but if, if you're new to it, th this is what, this is a process. And pro I'll put the link in there to the, uh, the pit. well, no, that's the wrong one. I'm, I'm trying to put the earnings whisper in there, but process, Mar Maurice is walking us through his process. Uh, a portion of his process of what, what goes on each morning or each day. And, uh, it, it, it's something that you, if we can get into a habit of doing, you have your routine to where it's less that you have to think about. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was, you know, my son was working out or when I was playing ball in college, I knew practice at this time, I, you have your routine down and I knew I'd have to stretch, you know, you stretch or you get your meal, come from class. Uh, I go take batting practice and things become the less I have to kind of balance and think about it and weigh the outside world's uh, pressures on where I can just, it can be just a strategic step-by-step -step process that I can repeat the less I can, you know, the less room for error, that kind of thing. So uh, I just think right now, if, if you're young from the standpoint, young in, in the market, building a process and establishing a process and, and it's going to, it's going to change, but that process is something that you can replicate every day, regardless of where you are on the road. Uh, you wake up in a bad mood, great mood, you know, okay, I'm checking invest. You know, I checked investing.com the other day. I already, I already know what's on the map. Uh, and I'm in this market. I'm in this sector, you know, one of the 11 sectors of the, of the, uh, S and P I'm focused on tech or, or just like Mo, Mo Mo comes prepared and he, you know, retail, retails on the, on the docket. That's not a highly volatile market, but in this market, it, I mean, something like uh, dollar general, I was like, man, dollar general, when Mo put that on my, on my, you know, on my ticker, just thought on my mind about almost a month ago, it hadn't made that big push, but I was like dollar general, man, I just went in there the other day and I was sliding by people trying to avoid, you know, uh, getting touched like something was going on. And then next thing you know, man, it made that run just like he's showing on his screen. You know, it's just not to say that, Hey, he's, he's the, the Oracle of, of, uh, discount retail, but he, he had the process and he noticed the, the volume changes and he has his, his technical analysis pro process in place. Uh, and he has it on the screen. I, I'm going to pass it back to you, Mo. And then I'll, I'll ask for the give and go. No, it's all good. Um, but like, uh, you asked, uh, like, how do I, or earlier you asked about how to, about how do I, um, uh, 
take out white noise and what's my signal? Like more than anything, volume is my signal. Like you can like you can get away with all kind of articles or news or whatever. Um, when the, these levels of volume with these bars, like you know, you and I and everybody on this call, we don't have enough money to move these to move volume like this. This is these are institutions. These are hedge funds, mutual funds, um, banks, pension funds. These are the guys that have the money making this. So these these are legit moves is basically what I'm saying. Um, the volume tells me everything. Uh, at, I check volume first and then I go and look at everything else and then I check volume last. Um, yeah, you are a vol you're a volume. I mean, uh, volume yeah. and the candlesticks will tell me everything. And I mean, even with this dollar general, like right now it's, it's looking like it want to uh, treat this uh, 179, 180 area as support. Um, I'll, oh, that's I'll a nice bull flag. Trying to trying to act funny. You're trying to getting ready to. Wow. Yeah, my uh, my breakout point would be past. It would have to break 183, not so 194, um, with some above average volume uh, for me to consider that a breakout. But I say all the time, like I, I don't like getting stuff at at all time high. I do believe this one. Yeah, high. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, like that's our most recent discussion. Yeah, right. I was just talking about that. I, I really don't like trading stuff near all time highs. But um, well, okay, okay. Let's 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 go on both sides of that. The rare occasion, all time high. You 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 pick you you pick up on that. It's like okay, we're at that all time high. I'm, I'm going back. But you see, okay, when I see all time high. There's certain ones, there's certain stocks that if it's a true momentum stock and I'm, and I'm doing a, uh, the Bobby Brown hit it and quit it, like when Roku is hot, uh, when um, Beyond Meat's hot, certain ones, if, if you're that trader and, and you set your stops, that's, there's a lot of risk in that. But I also, with something like Dollar General, I, I see those levels of support to where, okay, all-time high, let me let it settle and pull back. To, to price support and find another, find, find some accumulation. And then if it makes another breakout, I, I don't, I definitely, I don't go all in at these points right here. It like, well, you know, on the all time high levels, but there's certain ones that I just have to keep an eye on because the, the, the runners, man, it's that momentum runner, but which can, you know, which is a higher risk lower probability play at times, you know, so I follow mm -hmm. Mo's advice on that one with, when you get, because I mean, that, that's a standard rule of thumb of that when it's at that all time high. I just think about it like this, like <clears throat> it's it, like, this is all science. It's physics, it's math, it's geometry, it's all science. And I see these prices are, are like a force. And when we talk about support and resistance levels, um, they're like ceilings and floor, ceilings and floors. So if it's, if something like this is at an all time high and it busts through a ceiling, it's, it's a force, but it, that force still on this planet is subject to gravity. So it's going to come back and it's going to see if it's strong. And if this, it has to retest ceiling floor. Yeah. It's going to be strong enough to come back through. So when I say that, I say, you know, when I see things at all time highs, like, you know, I, I, that force, that momentum has already gone. I need to, I need to wait until it come back to catch the next momentum. That, okay. Um, see, you know what I mean? The, um, that, the, unless, patience. unless I will say, uh, right, right. It, you know, patience and waiting for the entry because if the breakout is real, it's real, it's going to come back. It's going to test. It's going to, that ceiling it just broke through it's gonna be like a ball it's gonna hit the floor come back and it may hit the floor stronger and bust through the next seat or create well, or to go down and revisit way, a couple of you know the people that are left behind and right let, you know let us get um, in a little bit and uh okay this this is what i want to say we're talking about um okay nvidia or mm -hmm. and, and when you when we really break down uh, uh, technically analyze a chart and I look for, we always talk about gaps in the old saying, all gaps must be filled. 
when I see a gap on the daily or a gap on the weekly, um, there's like, let's say I go back three weeks, two months, and I see that gap, a, a heavy gap up that wasn't rectified. And we're pushing to those all time highs. You, we've seen it so many times, man. We've seen it in McDonald's. We've seen it in Disney. We've seen it. My, now, Microsoft tends to fill its uh, gaps kind of early, you know, to me. But certain ones like AMD had a gap a few years ago and it gapped up and it, well, a couple of years ago and it pushed, it pushed and it, it, it pulled back to, you know, and I'm not talking about Rona. I'm talking about, you know, before Rona. So it won't be as, as acute or pronounced, but filling gaps, man, is, is just like part, part of its game plan. Uh, I, there might be, okay, there is a gap on Microsoft right here, uh, right before November. It wasn't filled until. And that's, and it had, hasn't it been filled? It's been filled, uh, right, yeah, Rona filled it. Mm -hmm. And and people can say, yeah, man, uh, yeah, you can put the conspiracy theory in there, whatever, but man, it, it always, it, it tends to more, more often than not, uh, gaps get filled I'm, I'm gonna put a link to something like that and i'm gonna pull up in Wikipedia and let so uh so hopefully guys when we touch on things uh i guess different strategies or different sayings within the industry that we've studied all gaps must be filled uh, i like for you to be able to research it and, and hack it and learn it and understand it and, and, and what either debunk it or run with it you know uh let's see I'm doing that, uh, playing the gap, filling the gap, prevent limit order. And guys, I, I use uh, investopedia.com uh, a lot. It's one of the just, uh, it's just another resource, you know. Uh, I just, I think you, we have to have um, reliable sources of, of, of information or reliable sources where we can obtain news or in or free investing education. That's big for me. I, I mean, you can't just, everything can be free, but you just can't pay. We don't have the money to pay for every single thing that's on the internet that, that can help us. Mm -hmm. I just, Mo is big on that about, hey man, if I can get it free, you know, like on the website, let's, let's roll with it and, mm -hmm. and test it out. But uh, if, for the weekly outlook, Mo, is there a sector that you, that you're focused on this upcoming week? Because uh, that's going to um, be big for for everybody. Uh, yes, there are there are a few actually. Um, uh, let's see, where can I go to? Okay, first, okay. Well, I guess I can show you some of my report. What I usually do, um, in my report, um, one of the things that I do uh, is. I follow sectors and sector trends and um, give sector seasonality um, outlooks as far as for um, which uh, sectors tend to be uh, strong in certain months and which sectors tend to be weak. And um, a few sectors that, you know, uh, well, I use ETFs to, um, you know, follow those sectors. Um, and a few that I had highlighted for me, uh, well, these are pretty much the ones that I highlighted for me. But uh, like I said, I, I, I've been pretty um, bullish tech. Um, I've been watching the NASDAQ outperform for the last few months. And um, you can see uh, a few of these reasons, a few of these uh, ETFs are why. Um, I just wanted to pull up a chart of a cup, pull up a couple of those charts. Um, see how they've been doing this month. Hey, what, what are you tr uh, trading view with your charts? Yes, trading view with my charts. Okay, guys, the charts uh, that Mo is using, he's on tradingview.com. I'm gonna put it in the uh, link. So this part. is uh, GDX, the uh, Vanek Vectors Gold Miners. Gold has uh, been this month. On the it's run, up 13% this month so far. Um, this the uh, uh, Bitcoin, tr the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Okay. Uh, That's pretty. Let me just show this one real quick. Um, 
she's up 11 percent this month uh we'll come back to ibv because these two are kind of in the same around tech i want to talk All about right. these espo and sky i like sky because it covers pretty much all the cloud computing. Um, and he, he's looking at the monthly time computing. frame. Yeah, and this is a monthly chart. So these are returns by month. Um, and you, as you can see, this looked like it hit a nice bottom in March. Um, and April has just been busting. It returned 14, almost 15% in April, and it's up uh, a little over 5%. This month, and this other one I like uh, is the gaming sector. Um, this mm. one uh, houses uh, the EA Sports, the Activisions, Take Two, um, even Nvidia, Microsoft. Uh, What's that ticker? A little bit. This is ESPO, and this That's one is okay. Good. Eight point seven four percent this month. Um, so I try to give you know my traders. Um, many different you know ways to um, get access to the markets um, this was also uh, one of the short banking and materials um, yeah banking's catching that, uh, a little bit of a, a bird they caught a little they caught yeah. a little heat this, this i've been on those month. regionals but you've been on kbe for oh yeah, yeah down 15 percent this month so um guys uh, technical analysis uh is is, is that's uh, i think that's the backbone of like of, of right the majority of what we do and majority of what a lot of traders and investors do even if they say there's fundamentals but it, it's it's like with, with me in baseball with scouting I, I use a lot i have to use my eyes i have to use what i can see and and movements uh and, and trends but there's also trends that that i can't see that you can pick up on the charts and that's what a lot of we're merging in baseball. We are merging advanced metrics with traditional scouting. And that's been a, uh, that that's caused a lot of, uh, cause a ruckus, man, you know, for, for someone that you had 65 year old scout, uh, it's like, I don't need to see a damn computer to tell me what's going on with this player, you know, that kind of stuff, man. But this, I think there's a happy marriage of, of, traditional from the standpoint of uh, you have technical analysis and then laying the moving averages on top of that and picking up uh, just certain trends and have adding your style to it, man. Mo, someone wants to know if uh, you could look at KGC. Erica wanted to see if you Yeah, see. I was just looking at the chat. So I wanted to uh, say a couple of things before I went to KGC and address another question. Okay. Um, I'm going to put KGC up. But um, IBB, the biotech, ETF. Yeah, that yeah. was another one that um, you know I had on the list. Uh, biotech is one I've been watching for some time. It's been on a, you know a pretty strong one, and uh, trying to come up with this vaccine is you know one of the reasons why. But biotech is just um, it's an interesting sector all its own. It was KGC. KGC. Yeah, and we'll we'll, we'll circle Ross. back around to biotech because I got a couple of things I want to chat. You know. Okay. With. Um, this is a weekly Ooh. chart that I'm looking at. This is a very strong uptrend uh, on a weekly chart. Let me move to a daily. Uh, oh wow, that's that's pretty nice right there. That that looks like a breakout, ma'am. Um, let's see what let the, me see. Let's see what it does Zoom tomorrow. Look yeah, at Erica. What I, I'm on the right. last dance. What I do like is. Um, Okay, so it's a general uptrend. Um, of course, we had this funk here, mm -hmm. but it, re it recovered well on pretty decent volume. Um, gap up was on high volume. Uh, this was on high volume. And then it consolidated. In this it's area. important that's, right below it, that's too. That's pretty man. good, right. Um, Look like maybe even a head and shoulders, reverse head and reverse shoulders. Reverse, inverse, yeah. Um, and for my alligator, this is textbook, uh, bullish, um, outlook, you know, my fan out like that. My alligator is out eating, you know, ready to continue eating this, um, this candle, uh, is interesting that they, you know, uh, it, it 
close towards the top. Um, this long wick show that, you know, bears tried to push this price down, but bulls was able to continue to push this price up and close above this previous high on pretty much average volume. So that's pretty good. Like this, this is a breakout camp. Man. Nice call, Erica. Uh, Let me put this on my, in my red list. <laughs> yeah, I just wrote it down. <laughs> hey, everybody, I just want to give, leave my uh, email address in here, man, before I forget. Uh, J JD. And now I'll put my stuff in there, too. And I wanted to address one of the uh, questions in the uh, chat. I, um, do I use ETFs to find individual stocks? Yes, that's a great hack. Um, that's something that I didn't know uh, if anybody else did, but um, I uh, my background is um, in academic is in economics, and so um, I often say that I'm just a you know a business econ nerd. So I I study mutual funds and look at them and, and their makeups and um, hedge funds and such. And so uh, looking at these different ETFs and looking at their holdings and seeing who's holding what, who's holding what, what percentage, um, seeing uh, that's, that's a great way to uh, find individual companies. One thing I would say is um, if you can get yourself a good publication to, uh, because there are many uh, ETFs in the same uh, realm uh, that are uh, products uh, made by, you know, different companies, but they are the same different, like five different biotech ETFs. Um, you know, my suggestion would be to go and see which one of those is performing well and try to see why, see if it's a difference in their, um, their allocations and um, which companies or um, if they hold totally different companies. A lot of times it may be allocation, um, but that would be a, a kind of a little homework way is maybe pull two or three ETFs and see, you know, the top 10 or top 20 companies and write down the percentage um, the percentage holdings of those and um, that will give you an idea of how much those companies um, affect the in, the entire price of, of the price movement of the ETF. So if they do well and they're holding, you know, a large portion of these companies, prob that company is probably doing well. All right. Yeah. Um, but this Ken Ross Gold, um, yes ma'am, uh, or sir, was it a lady? It was Erica. I believe Erica, Erica. yes, yeah. yes, yes, ma'am. Um, you get the gold star for this one if this break out this week. So um, we are going to, we're going to have to probably keep up with this one, J.D. Yeah, yeah, it's, I just, it's written This one's down. at 744. Uh, but this is at, it looks like all-time highs. Let me take some up. Oh, wait, nope. Hold up. See, oh, that's even more. Oh, my gosh. Erica, you might have found a gem. Oh, this is oh, the, this the is bottom perfect. of the bell curve. Of the, of oh, the... my gosh. Okay, so, all right, so. A base breakout. What the hell, man, Erica? Is, man, Erica, you on it right now. Okay, so I'm looking at a monthly chart. This is a long-term chart. If you are an investor um, and you're planning on putting your money up for, you know, more than six months to a year, you know, you and you're a chartist, you want to look at monthly charts. So I'm looking at a monthly chart. Each one of these bars is a month. And, you know, based on my alligator, this is what we consider, you know, a perfect turnaround breakout. Um, the alligator is up and out of the water. Um, my colors are turning over. Um, these are pushing up on this one. Let me zoom in here so folks can see this. This candle here on hella volume, on hella hmm. volume. And then this candle before is kind is is it's got a large body, but it's sort of like a hammer candle in which the price came all the way down here, but the bulls were able to push this price back up near uh, the support level here um, with all this volume. So this is a, a key reversal here, um, and this is on a monthly chart. So if I zoom out to a weekly chart, and this would be what I consider an intermediate term. Um, Oh, crap. What did I do? Okay. So this is what I consider inter intermediate term. Um, a few weeks to a month. Um, this, one, mm. this one broke out actually right around here. This, this was it, the bottom. 
it but closed this, a couple of gaps. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Okay, it's all good. This was the bottom here. Um, you see that? Uh, I'm I'm gonna pull this one up when I when I get that screen back, man. Because this is that's the that is the basin that I look for for within a recovery or turnaround. Oh, like, right. Not a um, V. A turn. Not a, I like a. Nah, it's a bowl, it man. It's to be. It's a bowl, right? It's a U-shaped type of true. Yeah, it tested. Kind of, oh my gosh. This and that's the Oliver Velez. Uh, the bell curve, man. Man, this is this is a, a great uh, catch right here. This is. This is where you want to trade. This is the type of trade that you want to try to get in if you're trying to go long. Because uh, even though on the weekly chart, this is just getting started. So this is a uh, this is a situation where if you're trading on the daily chart, this is uh, buy the dips, <laughs> buy now, all of the dips. But this may break out some more. One um, thing I do always look at though, right there on that breakout of a base breakout is running into that other side, that double top on the left where it's going to test. It's, there's a little area that's where, about to here? test. Here, yeah, here. A little bit further. That little, right, yeah, you passed it. I look. Here. No, but I mean, it's to go down here. that waterfall right in that little bit lower, right in those areas. Down, down, and just go one tick over to the left. Is it already broke out? But I mean, it. Okay, there, there's a little, there's a little. If I can, let me get the cursor, man. Okay, I, yeah, let me see. Hold up. Because there's an area, man, for me to just watch. Uh, let's see. And I'll give it back to you. I just was uh, KGC, right? Mm -hmm. And I like, I like your screens much better, but. And you're on the weekly. Yeah, that was a weekly chart. All right. So that was definitely more a long term. Um, this is definitely, in my opinion, a long term, long play. Um, trading, you know, daily or trying to swing trade it. Um, Let me back out just a tip. Best. It's at that, it's at those levels mode for me, uh, where I, so we're at 744. I, just for me, I'm looking at resistance at that 832 handle and, and just in this area that is, you know, 832 to 753 ish to where it's going to be lines in the sand that for me, this, you know, we're going to have to some decisions to make from the standpoint of just keeping our eye on. And it's like, it's, it's not heavy supply. It, it, it's just no. something where it might just be, okay. It might go into a trading range at this point up here because we're coming up and on my RSI, I'm not at 70. And I, and I, when I get up to 70, I'm like, okay, let's make a decision. It's going to, you know, it'll be overbought. It doesn't mean it's going to sell off. But on the weekly, once it gets into here, it will be extended on the RSI. And that's going to, and it, it could stay up there for, for weeks. Like it stayed up for uh, extended on the RSI for a few weeks over here. This is a, a hell of a move right here. And I, and we have a, let me go a little closer in. Got a, the prettiest bull flags coming up on the weekly and I'm going to put the 21 day up real quick, man. Let me, uh, let me get my editing in. Get that 21 guys. I, it's just, these, this is a simple moving average that I'm at adding to my chart guys. And, and I'm sure it's well above it. Uh, that's a beautiful angle. I'm, I just really think that uh, I think it's a long-term play, actually. Um, and also, just like Mo said, it's, it's, it's very tradable, and the pricing is perfect. I would just 
and this is a this is a gold uh, ETF. Mm -hmm. Seven forty four to eight thirty two. That's an eleven point eight percent move. Well, I'm saying we're going into this area of let me keep an eye on pop. And it, it could quite possibly come up in here and begin I'm just that trader your buttons, JB, man. I'm just pushing your buttons, man. No shit, man. Hey, look, look. <laughs> I'm, 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 we had to, just like I'm, I'm a World War, Z, World War Z guy. The guy was mm -hmm. like, uh, when, when those, they had the, uh, the ninth man, like if, if eight people in the room saw that as a yes, it was the ninth man's job to see it as a no, but not, not, not to just be contrarian, to be contrarian. But no, just to I say, know, man. yeah, man, I this is this is the one. No, this is a great pick, Erica. Great I, catch. Thank you so much. I think it's a long term. Uh, this is a great long term play. Uh, the basin that we're building right here, and it's a base breakout, but all breakouts will it'll test, like Mo said, and it's it will fail and wow. it'll find support and then it'll make that run, man. Th that's I can't say it will. It, is setting up for that. Uh, yeah. I'm, okay, I'm, then look at technicals for ETFs. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Let me drop it back ETFs to you. ETFs uh, just, or? no, it's, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's okay to look at technicals. If it, if it can be put on the chart, you can use technicals to read it pretty much, um, in my opinion. Um, Let's see. But see. yeah, you can most definitely do it. Like, because that's exactly what the SPY is. People trade the SPY every day. It's an ETF. So, yeah. Hey, uh, Erica. On this one, I'm fibbing this one up. Hey, Erica, thank you for, for that one because uh, when, when Mo says, when Mo kind of get the high pitch laugh and, 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 whoo, you know, <laughs> and, and, and then said, oh, he, he's, he's the one that moves with patience and caution. And when I'm, and I'm the one that's like, jump in, you know, so when we did the opposite, <laughs> you, that means you got the pick. You, you did it. Out. Uh, let me tell you guys one oh, thing. Man. We mentioned IBB, you mentioned biotech. Yeah, I, I that's an area that, that I've been kind of paying attention to, not yeah. just because of Rona, but the fact that um, I really think biotech is, is an area for me is uh, of like, let's see, just, I, I believe that we're in that, okay. We have vision, we have ideas. You're like, oh man, they still take your blood like this. Oh, they, you know, they're still, uh, it still takes six weeks or three weeks to get uh, test results or whatever. Biotech has not made that exponential leap. There's a lot of regulatory issues. There's a lot of, a lot of nefarious uh, characters because there's, there's so much money to be made in biotech that people are going to fraudulently uh cause issues and, and different things but i think over the next 20 years biotech is a, there needs to be a spot in our portfolios for the right biotech plays to capitalize on any any significant breakthroughs uh this is something that steve jobs was talking about years back uh and it, it always says that we're all specialists now even primary care doctors a structure that prioritizes the independence of all those specialists will have enormous difficulty achieving great care. You know, big pharma, um, it, it talks about the public's experiences, what we have amazing clinicians and technologies, but little consistent sense that they come together to provide an actual system of care from start to finish. So it hasn't, I'm not saying that, that biotech is gonna, it's gonna blow up like you want to right now within the short term. But over, if people are talking about a five, 10, 15, 20 year window, Okay, let's say we find a treatment or something for for uh, for Corona. That's going to be that's going to be a win for for several companies. Not to say that hey, I don't want the entire population to be inoculated for from a vaccine that this rushed and tested. That could be that that's where the short term volatility comes into biotech and concerns. But over the long term, oh yeah, Mark Cuban even said it, man. I mean nanotechnology, things like that, that's going to come into the biotech field. And it's up to us to research the areas or, or companies that we feel that uh, are going to be in position to uh, possibly capitalize. But it's, it is the, it is one of the riskiest 
uh, most speculative areas that, and it's, they talk about manipulation. That thing, you know, you, yeah, you can manipulate it because it, they get so political and they see so much money. But if we strategically position ourselves, there's a chance to capitalize on that. Uh, I know Mo was doing the weekly outlook and he had IBB on there. I'm currently in IBB. Uh, I got in Friday. I got in Friday at 128.59. I bought some June 19th, $125 calls. So I got in on a uh, on a nice a nice move on a really a pullback. I spotted a doji the day before, and I waited for it to break above a certain level. And I entered, I hopped in. Now with biotech, with the volatility, I know we were talking, we're trying to go stocks for a lot of people, but I also, I, I always like to look at the options chain if, I, if there's a stock that I like. Uh, and I am in Caesar's Palace too, guys. I just want to let you know, just, I just put, took a little flyer on, on that. I felt good about the, uh, I felt good about Sin City, man. But this is the chain that I checked out. And the spreads were actually really good. I got in, I think, at the $7.50 handle. And the implied volatility for you options trader, traders, the implied volatility is something that I pay attention to, but I primarily look at the delta. And I wanted it to be over 60. And I think, what was it when I got in? I write it down. It was exactly at 60. Uh, spread was wide, so I set a, a limit order. And I hopped in and, and it, it caught wind. And the uh, open interest was, was sturdy. Uh, open interest actually was, is, was the same, 30, 32.71. Volume hadn't picked up because I have 33 days. The volume was going to be heavier, you know, in the, in the lower, right in these areas, of, you know, the days to expiration because it's, a lot of the contracts are going to be open and closed. But... I'm I'm a biotech. Uh, I'm very 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 interested in this for a long term move. But if you hop into biotech long term, it is imperative that you be prepared to deal with any drawbacks, any downturns. This IBB could pull back. This gap was closed. This gap was not closed right here, guys. Uh, that 108, even down to the, you know, the 105 region easily, you know, it, it's just part of the game of, of a highly volatile stock. And it might take three years before it recovers and finds all time highs. But right now I'm doing a short term, short term trade. And also I'm building a small position in the company. Now, uh, the, the top holdings, it has a Moderna, it has a, one of the, it has another company, uh, Vertex uh, Pharmaceuticals, things like that. that there, you have to know the top holdings of, of the biotech company, and then you can go a little further. And another company that a uh, young lady asked about was CRISPR. This is a wild card kind of company. You know, you, you got to research things. The, the gene therapy, uh, it's it's all up and coming, and it's all controversial. But you, I just believe we have to be willing. To, uh, to face the music and say, okay, we might get into this, in, into biotech, and I might, I might end up owning shares of a company that, that's doing some unethical practices. Am I willing to deal with that? Am I willing to deal with that volatility? And I'm also, am I in position, if they do find a breakthrough, will I be able to glean that profit? So that, that's something that, 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 that's part of my, my assessment when I started to go into biotech. Uh, so, Mo, um, you want to go anything into it, man? Because Mo and I are right now in the process of researching uh, the the biotech sector for our monthly report for June, and I'm telling you, I'm 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 diving into it, guys, and I'm 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 seeing a lot of a lot of uh, there's a lot of individuals who have invested in the biotech sector, but maybe not at the on the public side, but they were the the seed money for there's a company called Theranos that, that went under, but everybody that I was watching being interviewed, 
they were the big wigs, man. Uh, Tim Draper, uh, Henry Kissinger, you know, I'm talking about guys from like Ronald Reagan's era and stuff that, that are in, vet, in the biotech field. So there, there's some BS in there, but there's also, if we sift through it, there's a chance to find something that, that, that can make, that can make, oh yeah, yeah, she was a scammer, man. Uh, we could, we could, we could make something happen in that. And Erica said CRISPR's on her list, BLK. Uh, so Mo, Mo, go ahead, man. Uh, that, that's what I am. I mean, guys, I'm, I'm, I'll be watching IBB uh, tomorrow and looking for an exit because I think I'm at, I'm at a little bit of resistance and uh, I just, I, I'll watch it in the morning and, and see, see where we go. Cause we had some, I had good volume on that 30 minute going out of the, you know, headed out, but there's some little bit of uh, fodder up here from the 30 that I'm just going to keep an eye out for because people took profits uh, last week in that range. And, you know, or, or it might, it, it, now, if, if President Trump steps in and says warp speed is moving ahead, we're going to find a, uh, there will be a vaccine next Wednesday. You know, so anything can be said and, and it will trigger IBB and it trigger it, it'll get the balls rolling. So I'm definitely going to watch any press conferences to see if Fauci has the mask, anything. So that is, it's going to be key next week. Uh, it's back in your hands, Mo. Um, as far as what I'm watching for this week, data wise, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to see how um, I'm, the retail retail companies respond to earnings uh if and if they respond badly if that's going to pull the market down um also like i said i'm still expecting uh, tech to do pretty well um this is one uh not bad i shared it no 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 it's all good um i shared this in my group deal and i'll share it with you guys um no, I don't know much about this company. Somebody asked about IBIO. Um, I don't know much about that company, so I can. Uh, and this, this is well out of my price range. That's probably why that other gold stock didn't come up. I usually don't look at anything under twenty dollars. So, um, but um, where is this stock? Um, Nvidia. Um, I don't usually trade earnings. Um, but, um, I'm going to be watching this stock for an entry around earnings. Um, this is a weekly chart on NVIDIA. Um, That's so it's, pretty, man. it's been beasting and it pretty much has a textbook, um, cup and handle. handle formation. Yes. On a weekly chart. Um, even like kind of with this double bottom here pushing up. So, um, the technicals is there, like. Even the top of the cup is like perfect. Um, the pullback um, is perfect, it, and and it broke out over the previous high. So this is technically a cup and handle breakout, um, and cup and handle breakouts uh, can go. That sentiment so, play with AMD man has to be uh, close behind at some point. I'm thinking, you know, they almost. The AMD yes. tries to keep up, man. That's great. I know I, I talked about I don't like doing things at all time highs, but this is one that's um, an exception because um, it's a technical, um, it's a very highly probable technical play. Um, the cup and handle formation uh, at the top of an uptrend um, is a definite breakout signal. So what I'll be watching for this week, like I said, they have earnings uh, this week, I think Thursday. And so I'll be looking to see if uh, this makes that first retracement back um, towards this area. Let's go to, oh, well, and this is also why I like it. My bad. That was a weekly chart. This is a daily chart. And this little arrow here is the handle uh, from the larger cup and handle. And it has its own little mini cup and handle that it's breaking out from so it's a cup and handle 
Inverted Within, head and uh, shoulders, if you want to really. And you can put it that way, inverted head and shoulders here, too, that it has cleared and broken yeah, out from broke on, the X, on excellent volume. Look at almost twice oh. as much volume. It broke. So this is a clear breakout. Um, like I said, what I'm going to be watching for um, for earnings is to see, because they report at the end of the week, I'm going to see how price reacts Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday um, to see if it does pull back Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Because if it does pull back a little bit into this 322, 325 area, it might bust through on earnings. Um, if it continues to go um, and still is like kind of in, you know, all time high area, then when earnings come, that's probably when it's going to make its first pullback uh, test uh, before it uh, takes off again. Hey, Mo, um, before we get to, too far, man. Don't forget to put your email information in because okay. uh, we don't want everybody to uh, start dipping out, man. But I'm everyone. I'm gonna put mine back in there as well. Uh, and okay, I definitely will. If you um, want to be on the email list, just email me, and I'll add you to the email list. I send stuff out in the mornings you know, on certain days, and uh, if if you're interested in that the monthly report too, though. Email me and let me know that. That's separate from the email list. Uh, Mo and I are working on that together, and that's going to be different sectors and different theses, theses each month. So for June, I mean, we're we're, we're you want to give it? Let them know the the, the sector. Um, <laughs> well, since uh, JD hey, since JD shit, twist I'm sorry. twist my arm. And held it behind my back virtually. We are gonna do biotech for our the first. Well, I'm, I'm, I told them I don't really trade biotech, but I do love research, and I want to try to give something as objective as possible. So I'm so, gonna treat it just like I do my monthly reports. I'm gonna go, you know, uh, through the sector. I'm gonna go, you know, back in time and look at some almanac information, some uh, historical data, some seasonal data, um, and then look at some current companies that I think. Uh, our, our objective is uh, more long-term positioning for uh, these. So these are not like trader picks to swing trade or anything. This is something like, you know, you might want to, you know, over the next, you know, few months to hold for a couple of years, put a few dollars in and get, get these. So dollar cost average in uh, yeah. over, over a, and I'm, we, we have different, you know, we, we have the same ultimate goal, but sometimes you, we might have different styles and that's where trader personality and trader psychology and investor psychology comes in. Uh, big on psychology. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I might, I'm looking at on, on the biotech side. I, I just see if I can look above that, that horizon, man, I, I just see further out in my mind, it's some magical stuff going to go down, but over the short term, it's some stuff that's going to get your stomach turned and pissed off and in the news. But once it, once a breakthrough comes through, when you go through the clouds, you poke your head out. There's no, I mean, we have drones. We have, we can order food from the phone. Uh, hadn't had to leave the house, which is not good. But I, I just think the medical field, medical devices, med you know, all that research and development is going to be something special in that biotech sector, but it's, uh, I see a 10 year, 15 year window, something for our, our, our kids that, you know, chip away at it. And it's something that, that, that could pay off exponentially, uh, but it's volatile. So we're going to, if you guys are interested in that, just, when you email me, just let me know about that and uh, just say the monthly report. But if you just want the email list for each morning or whatever, uh, mm put that in there but and with Glad mo you brought that one up go ahead no somebody brought uh this because well, i was looking at this one I oh man you this get one. on my email list i put splunk out there two about a week and a half yeah. ago yeah oh i put the fib on this one so um splunk is interesting uh this one might mm, we'll see over the next couple of days MongoDB, uh, that, Splunk, uh, and New Relic. This one could pull back to the 618. Um, that's exactly where my support is, too. 143. Um, Splunk is... Uh, Big data. Yeah, definitely an uh, interesting company to continue to keep watching. Um, this is definitely uh, a 
starting to uptrend. Uh, according to you know my technical analysis using the alligator, it's uptrending. Um, it's uptrending on the fib. It's just uh, it touched that uh, seven eight six perfectly. Let's see if it pushed through. I doubt it though. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, and I'm putting a link to the last report. The big data report is in there and it had all, it, it focused on Splunk, New Relic and things like that because data, like I said before, Mo got on and, and this before the call got started, there, that is the new currency, man. Yeah. Where, where are you spending your money? Where are you going? Yeah. Are, are they, they're going to, they're going to trace us. Are they tracking, you know, and they need to know, okay, every click, uh, of course, Alpha. I mean, Google and Apple have already got a plenty of data, but these companies like Splunk that can do real-time ag aggregation and they can change, they're going to be the ones that the, the uh, cloud servers and cloud security that uh, they're going to combine and someone's going to get bought out, someone's going to buy someone else out, and ideas to be in position. Like Mo, pull the Fibonacci retracement, just he, he threw the fib on it, and, and we're talking exponential, uh, not exponentially. You're talking just oh, uh, man, it, payment process. I'm sorry, buddy. Go, go. Uh, it, no, it, no, no, no. It, go ahead. It's key, man. I, I just think, guys, technical analysis, learning support and resistance, just the best. Oh, look at that damn cat. Excuse mm -hmm. me, Erica. Look at Erica, just causing ruckus all week. No, because I've been, I, I knew when she said payment processors, this one stuck out because I was, I, I've been looking at stocks all weekend. Damn, I, I stayed up all night <laughs> the other night. <laughs> Set me up a short so we could then we can go along um, again. Right. I'm um, what but it's it's, it's it looks like and it wants to treat this as support though. So, I know, man. Uh you know, this could be one of those like Disney. Remember how Disney gapped up way back and it, it stayed took them, up. Man, it took them until yeah, they, long to, to fill that gap. We were talking about that for a long time. Yes. So this could definitely be one of Beyond those. Beyond me did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sure did. So um that could okay. be, and this is keeping support. So, guys, yeah. on, on that one right there, I think they were. Do they report this week? Hmm. Right, let me see. Let's see. PayPal. Let me pull it up. Go ahead and. Uh... Mm. But yeah, so um, I mean, unless anybody else, I mean, yeah. I know, what else am I looking at this week? I, uh, I'm probably going to trade the Qs this week. Q's has been uh, real, man. Oh, that was a great call last week, dog. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> brother said, I need hey. to send y'all my cash out. No, I'm just playing. Brother nah, said, hey, <laughs> hey, man, we, look at the Q's, y'all. Q's. I said, shit. Excuse my language. I said, I'm in the Q's, Mo. Thank you, dog. And, and let me get the check. Yeah. Man, it, we, we all were in the Q's. Yeah, good. that's right, Ben. We all were in the Q's, man. Shout out to the crew. But um, yeah, man. Um, I, I man, those Fibonacci's. I look up Aqua and Visa. Visa, another one too. Uh, I'm I've been reading a lot this weekend. It's another uh, trader I've been studying and um, uh, named W D Gann, and he was uh, uh, natural cycles and, um, and a lot of numbers and Fib basically Fibonacci retracements. And so I've been putting those a lot on a lot of my charts, both long-term and short-term. Um, They're coming in July, July, man. And it's, then watching Monty. He made it. Uh, PayPal supposed to, from what I'm seeing, report in July. Uh, I don't at, see why you wouldn't uh, have Visa and MasterCard. I mean, they're both excellent companies. Um, they both, uh, um, they both, I mean, they run pretty much in tandem. As you can see, they have the exact same chart. Um, I, I don't, I don't see why not. Like, and especially when we were just talking about PayPal, like this is another sector, um, I was, well, uh, I need to really probably get back into, but, uh, was big on last year. Um, was payment processors and um, that's going to be key. a lot of these. I mean, it, everything is is digital now. So um, and then Square, uh, Square. Uh, so that's 
you know, Twitter and. Uh, hey, before we let him go, Mo, uh, you want to say anything about streaming? About with Zoom, Ring, uh, anything? Uh, yes. I could pull up Zoom. I like Zoom, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Uh, and I said this um, on, I don't, I don't believe they say it here. I said on another call. But um, Zoom is in uh, an interesting Damn, look at uptrend that. channel, right? And this, uh, I'm probably, probably make this a little bit neater, but um, I just quickly kind of drew this out. But it's it's in an uptrend channel. Um, this is a daily chart. My alligator is up and eating. It's uh, pretty extended. But one thing that I like about um, Zoom, I was talking to my wife and um, Ms. she Jackson. made an interesting. <laughs> Ms. Jackson. Watch your um, mouth, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't get me started. <laughs> I made her Miss Jackson. Yeah, um, man. <laughs> but she was saying um, how Zoom is synonymous with, like, Zoom is video conferencing, just like how we use Google, like, no matter what search engine you use, if you're using Bing or anything else, you say, I'm going, I'm Googling, let's Google it. That's what you're going to tell somebody, Google it. Um, now they're saying just, the Zoom and, is... Let's Zoom. And that's how, well, we'll just Zoom later. You could be on Google Hangouts, but, you know, all right, we'll do a Zoom later. And with that, with it, that word sticking like that is creating uh, a lot of brand loyalty, which is which is very strong for uh, for Zoom. So um, this this chart here is a little haywire it's it in my opinion it's not a clean chart i wouldn't trade this chart i just keep an eye on it just because this is hey, a hot stop there's a china there's a china correlation to that too that is causing a little bit of um, other than the the, the privacy and, and the security issues there was something i was seeing about uh with china uh a concern you know because uh, remember recently and, and they didn't get the full headlines but uh President Trump was talking about kind of putting tariffs, but with any companies, uh, hedge funds or whatever that that were focused that were fully focused in with uh, investing in China, that I think he was trying to prohibit some things. Exactly. So that that could be a reasoning reason behind just a few of the, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a sloppy momentum chart, man. You know. To me, and but I, I can't. Right. I, I can't short it. It's uh, right. It's it's one of those. I mean, for me, and especially well, and this is also because, like, if I put it at a monthly, like, look, it has no chart. This also kind of falls outside of my. Uh, let me see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's at five earnings. I usually say wait three to four earnings um, before making a decision. And it show pulled off after the third earnings. But um I, I mean now it's chasing. Like that's just in my opinion. It's chasing. I, I mean, unless you're gonna day trade it and you're doing it, you know, on one hour or fifteen, like I, I could see possibly doing something like that. These are nice, uh well, that's weekly. Let's look at the daily. But even the daily, these are nice size bars, four percent, um, six percent, like so they move, like this is a good day trading stop. Um, for me, this is okay. just me. Um, but that um, that uh, trend, this is it's just not clean. So um, you know, a long term swing, especially in this mess, like I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Hey, Erica, you, you're uh, you're in the you're on the email list, so you're good to go. And you've actually been on there, so uh, I just wanted to let I'm you. I'm just know. gonna pull up a couple more charts that I had. I like okay. that I put marks by. Um, Adobe is another um, software stock. Everybody using the computer and software. Another uh, similar type of cup and handle. Um, decent volume on this breakout off of uh, the 20 moving average. Right now it's sitting right at my seven. So this is a con Look at the candles, point. man, that Rona yeah. caused. Rona <laughs> caused some, some, I mean, <laughs> you can't just, just panic <laughs> candles, man. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Roku. I'm looking for. I'm testing. Check your spam. One yeah. One. I'm uh, uh, um, I'm expecting this one to continue more to the downside, more towards the 103. 
uh, it's 103.20 area. Um, Disney, I actually like to the upside. Um, I put a fib on this one too. And I yes, actually, sir. That's I have the pullback a, we needed. I have a GAN fan on this one as well. I've, like I said, I've been um, studying GAN and um, this is hitting the one line. Well, most folks don't know about that, but anyway, it's hitting the one line. So if it clears here, and this was very, very good volume off, um, off um, uh, this three eight two fib. So I could see it moving up to this five or even pushing up to the six one eight at one twenty. That's the money right so, there. <laughs> like I said, I've been I've been reading Everett, man. I told shout you, out man. to Monty. Shout yeah. out to Monty. He he got me on it, man. This I, young I'm brother, young fella is a sniper. I man. put it on uh, everything now. Hey, uh, word. Up. Disney has. News, I can see man. it moving up though. Exactly, and they um they're, opening they're parks. opening tomorrow. Ex they're opening parks, and so that momentum I think is gonna carry. I think before mm -hmm. Disney makes another uh, another significant move down, it's gonna hit one twenty three. That's my prediction. It, it no. before before it go below one oh five or one ten, it's gonna hit one twenty three. Hey, so, hey guys, listen from a trader's perspective, also uh, Disney, th their their options, man, are are, are fairly priced. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of skewed okay. BS oh. in it. But now, one thing we you don't want to do, you don't want to get ahead of price. You don't want to hop in before confirmation. Mo gets confirmation. He lets things test. He lets things, you know, you get your move because I, I'll, sometimes I try to jump price, man. I get in the passing lane and deny that pass, man, and try to, and, and try to get the rip and go do the back door. That's a, it's a boom, you know, so give me confirmation, but it, that the reason if we, the, some of the reasons that we try to jump price or get ahead of price is because we might be undercapitalized. We try to get a cheap option. And we're thinking FOMO, like we don't want to be out, like, oh man, it's gonna take off and I won't catch it. And man. that for that forces like, hey, let me get in on the early part of this move when I could say a 90s joke, man, but I'm not. It's just <laughs> anyway, it, it's you, you know, you just poke your head, you poke your head, it's like, and then it goes dis disappears instead of just where someone comes in and shuts the door and, and then it goes. So let don't get ahead man, of price, I, but be prepared. Um, I man, I I appreciate you. I really do. I, I'm just man. I'm patient because I've had to be like I would chart some days when I ain't had no money to trade, and I would just still sit there and chart. So, I mean, it you know it 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 is what it is, and I still jump into some trades. My uh, you know, I still have to fight. Uh, that what we in DCG we call monkey mind. I have to fight the monkey mind and I have to fight the greed monster all the time. Like it's, but you know, doing stuff like this daily, trading with a group of traders, writing my report monthly and going through it and going by it daily and sticking to my analysis and trusting my analysis. Um, that that helps develop that patience. So, um, I guess this. I mean, as far as for my little watch list, like. I'm, I'm all these stocks I pulled up. I'm not in them, but I'm looking. I'll probably day trade them sometime this week. I pulled this one, Teladoc. Um, one yeah. of my favorite publications is um, Investors Business Daily. Um, and this one I pulled, um, I was just looking through companies and their numbers stood out on IBD. So um, I looked at the chart and I could see why the numbers stood out on IBD. <laughs> and uh, this is another uh, cup and handle looking like formation and what I like is on my daily um it held the 20 support like almost perfectly and it's sitting on my seven support now so um this large elephant candle uh with very good volume um yeah, this this could be a turnaround so I'll be watching to see if it can clear this 190 um and make a run for uh, uh 196 Hey, Juliet, I just answered your Tesla question. Uh, she asked about Tesla, Tesla. and I, I said, you know, uh, put it in the chat. I, Tesla's a volatile long-term beast for me, but I treat it like a speculative uh, tech company rather than a, a car company. And I know that I, if I get in, there's a chance Tesla could draw down 20% just off a of GP, off of, off, of, off of a Musk move. But it's also a chance that over the next 15 years, 10 years, and I say 15 because 
I'm not patient though, man. So let's say over the next 18 months, Tesla could double or Tesla could go to 450 and hold, you know, it, but I think Musk is one of the smartest in the room. There's a lot of, a lot of it, a lot of money in there. And then just like I said, the biotech where, uh, uh, the area, you know, you, you, you see past your, the, the, the current technology innovation. Now, things like plug power and uh, uh, the new one, Nikola, that new uh, NTIQ or whatever, or, or uh, I think somebody will put it in there. But I just think Tesla, I think, I think Musk is going to find a way. I think Facebook, even though folks don't like Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg and that team, they're, they're some of the smartest folks in there and, and their, their charts hold up too. Um, I just think Tesla uh, is, you have to expect or be prepared to, to eat volatility and, and heavy pullbacks. So that, that's, that's my, my take on that one, Mo. Um, Tesla, I don't know, man. Um, I got a love hate relationship with Tesla because I, I loved reading about Nikola Tesla and, um, you know, um, the official, his, the real the, name, the official Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Um, I appreciate what Elon Musk is trying to do with moving technology and science forward and not, you know, he's, he's one of the only ones I think he's like the Steve Jobs of now, you know what I mean? Like thinking completely outside the box. Um, and so I respect that, but, um, you know, Tesla took a lot of my money trading. So <laughs> well, see, that, that, I, I don't mess with bias, Tesla as far as, 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 far as the trade. I can't trade them. Because I know I lost a lot of money with Tesla. So I'm I take them in my like, 401k. Uh, I ain't going to trade you, but I like you as a company. I was, I, 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 I don't know. Like this, this area, uh, if I wasn't a chartist, if I wasn't a chartist, um, I would buy Tesla as a long term hold. Um, simply for all the reasons that I just said. Because I am a chartist, though, and I see this volatility, especially like this is a weekly chart, especially recently, the last uh, six months to a year. Um, and even, you know, kind of before then, it's, it's hard to find an entry point, a good long term entry point. So um, I, it's, it, I don't know, man. Like I said, I got to love that because I do like Tesla. I really do. Hey, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say one thing. Hey, and I think they're going to continue to grow. I think more people are going to continue to buy Tesla. I think uh, people are going to get tired of paying for gas. Um, and the well, that's, that's where, uh, goes, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, where. I, I, uh, think, I think it's going to happen. I keep seeing the uh, the chargers. They popping up around my neighborhoods everywhere. Like, I, I see more and more. So. Hey, Erica, uh, I'm, I, I'm looking at uh, Scorpio Tanker Sting. That that's a bearish, heavily bearish chart on the weekly. Uh, it's a da and and it's it. I mean, on the daily we might have a we have a doji, but that I mean it's still bearish and it's coming into a little support. But I, I, it's a spec play on those tankers because everybody's basing it off of oil and the oil supply, and saying okay, there's no place to put the oil, no place to put the oil, so. Tankers popped, but NAT. I shorted. I went long NAT, and I shorted in NAT. And I think Who this is the Scorpio tankers. This is the uh, Erica. I now be careful if you're going long off of that. There's nothing that's saying, "Hey, hop in and go long." There's no confirmation. There's nothing to say that hey, it would all be on speculation to say that. Yeah, your thesis would be off. Like, well, what's his name said. Uh, that since uh, Cynthia's big mama was going to cook Wednesday, if I came by and if I come over there, I, they'll probably give me a pickle. It doesn't make sense for me. You know, I just like, okay, just show me. Some, I don't, I can't see anything long with this, but it, it's a, it's a very risky play. And the oil sector is the energy sector is, is uh, a tough haul unless you got it. What, what Scorpio you think, tankers, um, Scorpio tankers. Okay, so because I don't, I don't know anything about this company. So what I would think is first, 
you know, what's going on with Tank. It's a tanker, so obviously it's a ship that carries sh- stuff. <laughs> it's a ship that carries stuff. Right, so right. my thing is, what does it carry? That would be the very first thing I would need to know. I don't, uh, maybe somebody put it in the comments, but what does it carry? It's an, um, I believe it's an oil tanker, man. Um, if, if it's an oil tanker, um, oil's having a hard time moving anywhere right now. Um, Oil and gas midstream. cutting supply. Uh, I was reading an article that one of the OPEC countries trying to cut more supply. Like, um, you know, it's a it's a interesting supply and demand issue with oil, both uh, WTI and current and Brent. Uh, so, depending on which uh, type of oil, or if it's refined oil already. Um, this Scorpio tanker ships um, that I, I mean just I, I guess that's that would help me determine you know where, where I see this going I I don't trade tankers I don't really uh, maybe that's something I should look into uh, it, I mean the, everything else. but I mean I just that's what I would look into is what are they moving and is what's going on especially if it's oil is what's going on in oil both brent and wti because there's issues with both those uh wti is u.s oil, created oil brent is basically everywhere else but main, mainly middle eastern created oil hey, like um, it's issues with both so it what is it affected by any of those issues th- this is one of the things that i look at as a trade uh most alligators is actually setting up on the downside but uh, yeah, very much. It's okay. Let's say you want to. You think you <laughs> driving around full of oil. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it, it, it's nowhere to put it, and nobody wants it. Uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, th- th- it's going down. Yeah, it, let's, let's see if it does re- rebound and, and reverse. Uh, it's not gonna reverse up so fast to where you cannot try to. Ca- if you're looking long term, you'll still have time to get in. But if you try to jump ahead of price. It could trend down into the down to fourteen, down to where's the other? There's some support levels that are even lower, you know, right, right there in that 12, 12, 12 50, you know. So you could lose, you know, twenty percent off rip or more. I mean, this and is a daily chart, so I don't so, know. and, and well, yeah, you can always go higher. Coming off the bottom, but it the weekly chart is what scared me when I looked at it. Mm-hmm. So it's still making a base. Yeah, and it, it broke I mean, below those lows, and it's not going to go right back up to that previous high, the Rona high. A lot of times you're going to you're going to find yourself in a trading range, and it'll be false breakouts, failures to retest to the lows in that trading range. Oil can go in a trading range for decades. I mean, in any stock, it take a whole lot longer for it to go up than it do to come down. So. Well, man, average, <laughs> all uh, things being equal. <laughs> hey Mo, I, I'm 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 a bag it up, man. Uh, I feel good. I don't uh, think there was any, but I know somebody has said something about gaming, um, ATV or video I. games or something. Or ATVI. That's why I had pulled up the Espo ETF. That was another uh, one that was on my thing because this one houses all of those companies: EA Sports, ATVI, Take Two, um, even Nvidia. Uh, I believe it has some Microsoft and uh, Sony. All all of those uh, uh, companies is held inside this ETF. So this is one um, that you can consider either trading or yeah, use it as a um, as a benchmark. Um, ATBI, I think. Uh, oh, actually, it's on a bullish yeah, bullish I'm run right now. At, uh, I'm actually looking for Activision to retrace. Yeah. Um, I think that they uh, will pull back before. They move forward, and the other one take two uh, reports this week as well. So oh, really? That may, yeah, they report on. Let me. I'll find it. Uh, the twentieth. When is that? Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. So, this uh, I'll be watching them to see you know if or how they affect um, Espo. And ATVI okay. because I'm following both of those. So. Well, look, look, family, look, everybody. Uh, we're we're going to wrap it up tonight, man. Uh, thank
thank y'all for coming out. Like I said, email Mo and myself. If you if you want to get on the email list, let me know. If you got questions for Mo about his, he, I mean, he he does a layout with the daily expectations of a, a like sector watch. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we it's, write we write out uh, you know the monthly yeah. report, and this we we have you know guidelines and instructions for our traders daily, so we know every day what what you can can and cannot do. <laughs> and that, that's 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 so the guidance. Out. That's the that's where it walk you through your process uh mm -hmm. and also and teach you, guys, you the alligator and all of that stuff that and it's big man uh i but the thing that mo and i are working on are, are is our monthly report where we just pick we're gonna pick a sector and a thesis uh every month Tell me on that one we're doing uh, we let the cat out i had to say we're doing biotech it's gonna be on come out on june 1st and gonna give you the, uh, ideas and, and just actionable ideas that you can that you can capitalize on in the market, whether it's long term, primarily long term, but I'm going to include a, a couple of ways to make some make some plays and, and, and moves on uh on that sector. So guys, I think it'll be great. Let's kill let's, like Huff said, let's kill them tomorrow. Uh, I'm ready to hop in. <laughs> yeah, man, but... uh, another quick tip uh for the 27 that's left. Look at the NASDAQ tomorrow. That's what I'll be watching. Cool. All right. How are you going to look at what, what are you going to check it out on under the, uh, um, the futures? Or are you going to go and look at the cues? Uh, I'll, I'll, I know people that trade the, the NAS 100 futures that'll work. Uh, I'll be trading the cues. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm right with you with the cues. You're not going to lose me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog. I'm going to finish right now. I'm going to finish that dog on report and I've had a cues right up on the screen. And if it's time to hop in. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put forty seven dollars in there, and and pull out one hundred and sixty. No, anyway, I'm I'm just talking, guys. I feel, I'm from Texas. I like. Hey y'all, thank y'all for coming. Lakeisha here. Alyssa, Crystal Slater Hawkins. Thank you. Uh, Keisha, Charlene. Thank you. Future. What's up, Future? Little Future. And uh, Gerald Prejean is in here tonight. Thank you, Gerald. Signed up with me, man. Uh, we're gonna do uh, an options uh, training start Wednesday nice. and that one on one. Nice. So uh we're gonna really nice. put it down. And uh he, he wanted to get in there. So I I had I decided I have time that I'm not gonna be on the road. So I went ahead and just said I, I can go ahead and do it. So uh I appreciate you coming to me, Gerald, and uh and getting the ball rolling. We got Nikita Tip Tippins in here. Let's see, Selena, Shirley Jones, Sonia G, Miss Williams. Uh, Sonia. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Cannon. DCG right there. DCG is in there with it. Mm -hmm. Huffy, Juliet, Kelky, or is that Kiki? Are you with me? Juliet, Jay Wood, <laughs> Donna, Erica, Deidre, uh, Tamika, Cynthia, uh, Gober, and uh, all right, and Charlene. So hey, Mo, thank you, brother. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch you in the morning, man. All right, you know what it is. You know what we I like that is. camo, Keisha. Yeah, I was checking. Yeah. Hold <laughs> it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the record, man. Y'all be safe. Appreciate it. All right. Y'all have a good one.